Today is Thursday, July 14th, 2011, and I am here with Janet O'Donnell and Rosemary Smith. And the first thing that I wanted to ask them was um, about um, their family history on the island and about what time your family first came to the island and who were they and how were they related to you. So, Rosemary, if you'd like to start. Uh, my great-grandfather, Pete McCauley, came to the island in the 1860s. And uh, he settled up on the south end of the island and he had, I think, 11 children. And um, my grandma was one of them, Molly, and she married Fre Fred Nackerman. So that's how the origin of my, on my father's side, my mother grew up in Pontiac and he met her when he was living in Pontiac. So she did not come from the island, but my dad did. And he lived here all of his life except for those few years that he was going to U of G college. And then he was, um, after they got married, they lived on, in Pontiac for about one or two years and he couldn't stand it. He was working in the factory and he came home one day and he said, that's the end of it. I just, I'm going home. <laughs> and I, I just can't stand it anymore. So, and she came up here and she came, you know, from a city where they had electricity and indoor plumbing and no animals around and cars and everything. And she lived at the farm without any of those things, no indoor plumbing or anything. So she was not too happy, but her dad called her one time and he said, are you happy? And she said, well, if I had a radio and a car, I would be okay. But Because it's isolated. You know, we're right up the road there. That's two miles out of town and with no car. And in the wintertime, they didn't plow the roads anyway. So um, my, her, her dad sent her car, her used car, and a radio. So he took care of those two problems. Oh, great. Um, so could you describe your dad a little bit more, like what he did here on the island? Sure. Uh, he worked at various jobs until I was five, which would have been 1939. And then he became the postmaster on Beaver Island. And he was postmaster till 1973, which was 34 years he was postmaster. And Frankie, his, he was always called Frankie, Frank Nackerman. And mm -hmm. Frankie Lane is named for him, the one that goes up and down by the building there. And that that's what he did. You know, he worked at that till he retired. And they still lived on the island till a few years before they passed away. They came and lived with us down when they needed help. Because we all, five, there were five of us, and we all ended up in the metropolitan Detroit area. And uh, so they were there taking turns living with us until they... Well, they were in a head to go into a nursing home at the very end, but I guess that kind of sums up their life. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. and, um, what did your mom do while she was on the island, like daily basis? Was oh, what did she do? Mm -hmm. um, housework, cooked, cleaned, washed, did the laundry. That was a whole day's job doing laundry back then, hanging it on the line. She had a washboard, and tubs, three tubs, galvanized tubs. Maybe there were only two. They would wash in one and then hand, uh, turn a hand wringer and the clothes would go to get the soapy water out and then they would go in to clear water and then she would have to wring them out again so they would be dry enough and then she'd go out and hang them on the line. And in the winter time, that's still how we dried clothes. And believe it or not, clothes freeze dry. You put them on the line in the winter, they, get, they look so funny out there because they're <laughs> stiff as a board. And then... Um, they dry. Uh -huh. By the end of the day, they're usually dry. Sometimes she had to iron them to get uh -huh. them completely dry. Your mom probably did the uh -huh. same thing. I huh? remember after school, going out and taking off the clothespins and yeah, you know, big long things. But she was so embarrassed when they moved to town because we still had an outhouse. And we brought a chicken, well, Daddy built a new chicken coop, had a chicken coop to it. And, you know, being a city girl, it was hard on her. But she got so she loved the island. Once okay. they moved to town, she was happy. She she liked it a lot. And, and towards the end of her life, after we grew up, she was the clerk at the post office, and then eventually she became the assistant postmaster. So when they had a retired, they had a good retirement. Okay. Pretty, pretty lady. Oh, yeah, yeah even when she was old, the old mm -hmm. people used to the nursing home, you say, 
Your mom is so pretty. Yeah. And her hair. <laughs> yes. Janet, would you like to tell about how you're connected to the island originally? Or who you're well, we were born and raised here. Mm. And um, so Do you know one about your first Well, I'm just going to read here about um, when I got down. <coughs> then the 1870s after uh, King Strang left, that um, the Irish people started moving in here then. And that's how my grandfather... Um, one of the boys, one of the Gallagher's, um, he was um, the oldest son, and he was James H. Gallagher, and my dad, the son of him, was James W. So they called James H. Old James, and my dad, they called Young James, and that's, that went through all their life, I guess. Mm -hmm. They started that right out, and um, they were in the fishing business. And then when the fishing all went, my dad went into lumbering and a farm up at the stone house. And he had that. And, but um, we used to have to pump water the night before we were going to wash clothes and fill up those tubs. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then you had to put the, the big mud tub on the stove to heat up the water next morning before you, anything was done. We had to get that going, wow. and we had a haul in the wood, and um, now that I'm older, <laughs> this is something, um, I always help, I was the oldest of three, mm -hmm. so I was out, always out helping my dad, and milking and shoveling out the dirt and throwing down the hay and everything, and um, he built our house in that pile of sand, no trees around. And um, he had a little window down in the basement. That's all, there was only the one window down there. The, the half of it was sand, and then just where he had a furnace and some shelves, and then this big wood box thing. And we'd haul in that wood and have to stoop down to get those blocks of wood in that little window. Oh, really? And later I got thinking, why was that window so little? <laughs> <laughs> it was little. Just big enough, you know, but that's how he had built it, like hmm. that. So that's what we did. And hmm. um, my sister stayed in the house. My mom wasn't um, very healthy. Oh, and um, she so she stayed help. in the house and helped mm -hmm. your mom. She did the cooking and things like that, where I was out helping. Your you know, mm -hmm. okay. I liked it outdoors, and that was good. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, another question. I just more general question for both of you, since you both. Um, we're in the same class. What was um, school like for you guys? We went to what was called McKinley School. Okay. It isn't there anymore. You know, it was behind, and it had a big, long building behind the woodshed that, that it was called. We used to try and throw the ball over. Yeah, <laughs> we used to play what we called Andy Eye Over. And half of us would get on the back, and half of us would get on the back. Every day, this was like a recreation for recess. Mm -hmm. And we would line up. And uh, throw the ball over. They said, "Any, any, any, I over." And when they said over, they throw it. And then, of course, this was the you know, didn't know what part of it was going to come, and you wouldn't see it till it got to the peak of the roof. And then we would try to catch it. That was our big excitement uh -huh. for recess. <laughs> Run around and see if they caught it. I remember I used to do that because oh. they would yell and say, you know, "Yeah, we got it." Oh, and, <laughs> they were um, cheating a little. <laughs> And um, then in the wintertime, of course, they had a big old stove up, upstairs. The, um, the first floor was all um, one to the fourth grade. One teacher, the nun, mm -hmm. Sister Thea. And then we moved upstairs to the fifth grade. Mm -hmm. And, and um, that five, was... Five a, to eight upstairs. That was a big change. Yeah. Sister Gilbert. Yeah, she was pretty strict. <laughs> Too many <laughs> stories about her. Can you remember? Um, I remember we had to carry up wood, and I I did not like heights. And the stairway in the back was, you know, long, and it didn't have the 
back part of the step oh, it was just yeah. the, pl the board out and so you could see down the sand and everything below it plus carrying up that block of wood you know oh, I just hated that really uh-huh yeah. I, I remember a like funny that. story about that um, building because it was an old building and it was rickety and the younger kids were downstairs and the upstairs kids were five to eight and some of those eighth graders you know they got to be pretty big guys and of course when with the nuns teaching you always did everything in line you know at the same time we all left went down those stairs just one right after the other and when you'd be downstairs and those big kids would be coming down the steps they would shake the whole building mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> and it was I don't know why, but that's what sticks in my mind is hearing those kids come down in the building we learned. The worst thing about that school was they had chemical bathrooms. Oh, and, yeah. And the smell was yeah. terrible. And so I told my nose and run in. <laughs> there was that little, a little um, entrance way before you got into the classroom, you know, so we'd keep that door closed. <laughs> so that was... I, I had good, happy memories of school. Oh, I did too, yeah. Well, I did especially because um, we were, well, if after my dad got the job in the post office, um, we had, we couldn't stay at the farm in the winter because they didn't plow Darkie Town. This was Darkie Town Road then. And um, so we, we had to move to town every every winter. And mm -hmm. I got to come down where the kids were, you know. We, I had my brothers, my brother and my sisters, but we didn't have any kids living up here. So going to school was, I loved going to school because I could come to where the kids were. Mm -hmm. yeah. we, and we did had you lot. always grow up in town? Or yes, I did. Okay. Yes, that's why I said she was my a town girl. Okay. Yeah. I was my a country girl part of the time. Mm -hmm. Then eventually we moved to town. My dad, when he bought that uh, post office building, just as I was going into high school, then we got to come downtown all year round, and that was, oh, boy, yeah. I was a happy camper. <laughs> that, that was really, really happy about that. Okay. So was yeah. there really not that many interaction between the people who lived in the country well, compared to the town there, before? If we wanted to go to town, like if we wanted to go swimming, we'd have to walk to town, my sister Ellen and I. And um, we had to walk all the way down, so, you know, two miles, you don't walk down there every day, especially not when it's hot in the summertime. Yeah. Um, and and the people in town, uh, um, and then out in the country, we called them the farmers, when um, I didn't know the farm boys until they came to high school. Yeah. And Neither people cannot believe that. I mean, he lived here, and I'm down at where the hotel is. Mm. Never knew the fella. Like <laughs> 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 a whole new influx of boys. <laughs> and well, they, they all went to high school or to school up here at Sunnyside, and then when high school they had to come to town yeah. for the high school. And, and our high school was a little building, or I mean a little part of upstairs, and then we had to go down the hall hill, and um, the rest. Before of the kitchen is at the hall now, the parish hall, that little part that's the kitchen. That was a high school. That plus it was about it a third. Plus there's one other, but it was fun getting to walk up and down the hill mm -hmm. between classes, <laughs> you know, got outside and everything. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we were, we were to three. write down Latin or geometry. <laughs> what did you write down for that? <laughs> we, o we only had three girls in our class when we were going into high school, and then these six boys from the country came down. So that was... You know, yeah, they did. They stole oh, the horses because yeah. they always came. They came down with horses yeah. all the time. They had a buggy or something in the summer, Riding and a sleigh horse. or a cutter in the winter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and but uh, they'd have to do their chores, you know, before they came, milk the cows yeah. or clean out the barn. You could tell, sure tell when you think you walked in, even if you didn't see them. <laughs> I'll tell a story about Rosemary. At um, I did not like the height, you know, like I said. So one of our um, must have been the ninth or tenth grade um, picnic. We got to go, usually we had a walk out to Mount Pisica or out the first, mm -hmm. we called it first clearance for yeah, picnics. Where, where, the where the big old sewer thing is mm -hmm. now from all the sewage from town, that used to be a first big clearance and it was like a picnic area. You could play baseball and everything in there. It was really nice. So we'd have to walk yeah. out there from school for our picnic. But this time we got to ride up to um, the fire station and I had a camera 
and everybody's going up. And this one went up. And her and Richie were standing up, and he took my camera. I don't know why. Well, he wanted to take pictures for you from the probably, top, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Richie. I'm the, her husband now. Oh. He was one of the classmates. But you knew that, didn't you, that they both were in that same class? No, I didn't. I said, yeah, oh. that's who she's married to now. <laughs> that's why she's telling you in detail about the farmers coming down to town. <laughs> anyway, what happened with the camera? So, the two of them are standing together, and and he wasn't going to take my picture. I'm yelling, you know, okay, I'm ready, you know. No, he's not. He's and he was going to drop it over the side of the, and they're way up high, you know. <laughs> oh, I got so mad at him that day. <laughs> <laughs> he did. He didn't. But no, he she's didn't. standing there right by him. Well, what did you want me to do? <laughs> I, I don't even remember that part. No, of it. I heard the part about him threatening to throw your mother's camera down. Mm -hmm. But I didn't. I was standing right there. But I don't yeah, remember I, that. I can still see us up there. Yeah. <laughs> It's a vivid memory in your mind, uh -huh. right? We did have fun, though, in high school. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we did have fun in high school. We um, had um, the nuns taught us how to dance. Mm -hmm. and we and called it co-op. Friday afternoons, we'd get into the hall and have our dance. Square dances and regular dances. Lots yeah. of square dances. Box square for the mm -hmm. walls. And oh, how to waltz. Shoddy. Remember when All we high had school, had? This, you know. The tenth and twelfth graders. And yeah, uh, no, there was four: nine, ten, eleven, twelve, all together in one room. <laughs> no, we had two rooms, but we would all go, and mm -hmm. and that was that was something we looked forward to all. Friday yeah. afternoon. And and the and the school picnics too. We really had fun on those. And other you know things we'd go out and put and climb Mount Pisca and do all kinds mm -hmm. of silly things out there. <laughs> yeah. We tried everything roller skating and skating on the ice in the harbor mm -hmm. when that would freeze over. They'd mm -hmm. have a big bonfire down by McDonough's there. Oh, and sometimes the whole harbor would freeze smooth, yeah. real smooth, and it was a beautiful nice. ice skating rink. Pretty. But it would be thick enough, because the, the men would always make sure it was thick enough for where we were allowed to skate, but it would have cracks, and you, it was clear. You could see right through it to the bottom of the lake. And I used to love to skate across to the, you know, from the post office over to the Coast Guard station. Mm -hmm. and by the time you got out there, it would start to make this cracking noise. Because it, it always cracks a little bit, I guess, just mm -hmm. from the shifting wind or from the water moving underneath. I don't know which it is, but it, that would be kind of scary. But wow. it, oh, it made a nice skating rink. She went to swim from the dock over to the lighthouse, too, one time with Flynn. I don't remember oh that either. Are you sure God. I did that? Well, you, you wanted to. You know, to. we used to swim from one day, where the boat dock is now mm -hmm. and where the township, the, the uh, yeah. Well, that was her dad's dock mm -hmm. and then yeah, the boat dock. Okay. So we would go to her dad's dock and, and the, the boys would be there and we'd be at the boat dock <laughs> and then we would swim and meet in the middle. That so that was when I saved Peter's life that mm -hmm. day. Cause he Another classmate. Yeah, another mm -hmm. classmate. Another farmer. He was a farmer. I don't <laughs> think he, he ever swam before because he wasn't Happy. a very good swimmer. But he was swim swimming over halfway, and he, he was scared, too. I mean, that was really yeah. scary. I was scared, too. And I was a little stronger swimmer than him. So I we had learned in the way you learn to save people's life when you're swimming back then was turn them over in the back and grab them around under their chin. Back. So I did that for, you know, probably maybe three or four yards, not very far, because he was kind of a heavy guy, mm -hmm. and I was got, got tired really fast. But fortunately, right there, about this far underneath the surface of the water, there was one of those piles. There used to be an old dock there. Spile. In the, uh, in the pile. It's called still the spile. The spile. Mm -hmm. Is it got an Oh, I always thought it was a pile. Anyway, um, it, he found that. I mean, I, I took him far enough to get there, and all of a sudden he's rising up out of the water, and I thought, I, what is this, a miracle or something? But then he had found that. And he always credited me for saving his life, mm -hmm. just for pulling him that little way to get to that. It so was. Yeah. It was scary. I didn't you realize know. you were there that day. Mm -hmm. Were you, Janet? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was scary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And he was quite as. And then, then there. um, I didn't want to go home and and tell about it, because then we wouldn't be able to s to um, swim there anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so you didn't. Huh? <laughs> but yeah, the word did. got around fast. Yeah, we used to be uh, to dive off the. Oh, the fish boats. Mm -hmm. Fish boats would park down there. And those would be our diving platforms. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we spent a lot of time at the lake. 
Yeah. And, and now we're paying for it with cancer. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All of a sudden. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And a lot of time, well, I spent a lot of time climbing trees. Did you climb trees? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, we Out used back. to. Back. Up by the farm, there's that big iron, ironwood tree. Mm -hmm. You've been up there? Well, it used to be in the back towards the lake, it was clearer than it is now. And if you climbed to the top of that ironwood tree, you could see the lake. So, to me, that was a big deal to see the lake. So, I'd mm -hmm. climb up there. Fount Lake. See, see right. Fount Lake, yes. Yeah, you, did you go back there when you were up there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Do you swim? Would you go fishing at all? Or I never fished. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Oh, Helped my dad with the fish. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. And uh, he put up the ice. Yeah, that mm -hmm. was a, an interesting operation when he would put the ice up. Do you know what that means? No, could you describe it for us? Describe it. They had to, um, down where the dock is, where he had, um, he owned that. It was called Booth out of Chicago, mm -hmm. and um, he had fished a fish boat that um, the Indians ran, we, you know, our Indians, mm -hmm. we used to have a lot of them here, Yeah, yeah. and they Quite went to school with mm -hmm. us, in fact, yeah. we had one, Josie Ann, she graduated with yeah. us. She was the third girl in the class, one mm -hmm. of these, she was really a nice What was her last name? Lewis. Uh, Ellie Lewis. Lewis. Josie Ann Lewis, mm -hmm. yeah. But um, he had to wait until the ice was um, 18 inches thick and um, we used to go around and pick up everybody's Christmas trees and then he would stick that in the ice to mark it, you know, where he was going to be cutting. And um, and the Indians helped and other, like other men on other the island, yeah, here, well, it's yeah. like a day job for a lot of men. Because you oh, had, they I had bet there plan. were about 20 people down there. Yeah, they had okay. a plan, you know, yeah. when they were going to be doing yeah. the cutting. And um, then the horses, team of horses, they hooked that up and and um, he built the ice house up where uh, the whimsy sign is now, <laughs> by yeah, down yeah. from the post office there. Big, big building, and um, they he built um, about a hundred pound um, chunks of ice, and then in the summertime, then he'd chisel that down and take it into the houses that didn't that needed ice, you know, for their milk. And he had like stuff. a conveyor. Belt yeah, to that get that ice it up because they'd always put it in from the top because they filled that house up all the way and put sawdust on it. To yeah, keep, it would last all summer long in there because mm -hmm. we used to have an ice house up at the farm too at yeah. one time. Yeah, I used to run ahead, being out with my dad again working, um, run ahead and open up their screen doors and get down and take out. Always it seemed like the box was down low, you know, where he'd put the ice in mm -hmm. and take out whatever they had in there. So he could put that block of ice, it was always in a block, and um, 15 cents he'd charge <laughs> everybody. For black of ice? Yeah. yeah, no matter how big the piece of ice was or whatever. That was a refrigerator back then, mm -hmm. you know, there were ice boxes and mm -hmm. you just got bought a lot of still at the farm, you know, got all the pictures. We had one at the, our farm too, but I don't know if it's still there, I don't think it's still there. Got, got rid of some of that old stuff. We just lived in a different world. <laughs> yeah, we did. You know, People don't believe, even when I talk and try and tell my grandkids, you know, oh, Mom, you didn't do that. Yes, I did. <laughs> I don't know if you want us to interrupt your questioning there, but um, I belong to a Bible study at home, and it's all women, and we do a lot of Gavin besides studying the Bible. And every once in a while, I'll tell them one of these stories about Beaver Island, and they get a kick out of them, and they laugh if it's funny. But they always look at me like, she's just making that up. <laughs> like they don't really believe yeah. it. Yeah. I, I, well, it's so, you know, they're contemporaries of mine, and they all grew up in the city, and they all had all the modern conveniences all their lives, and they just can't believe that anybody their age, you know, went through all of that. But no right. buses. Yeah. No buses. Right. Well, we used right. to ride with the horse and sleigh in the winter time. I had I had a horse, my own horse. Fanny was her name, and she was so gentle. And like after school, Daddy would have to be out doing something, you know. So I could take her down to the store. Or sometimes the kids would get on and ride with me. <laughs> so if someone else wanted to have those reins, the horse she'd stop turn around and look to see who it was. She, <laughs> really? liked, she yeah. liked to do that. Did she, she like to have somebody do No, she oh. wouldn't go. Oh. <laughs> and, and if I if I left her turned going down towards 
you know, the, like the post office. She'd stay there until I came out of the store. But if we turned around, she'd go on home, just up to where the hotel is now, is where I mm -hmm. live. She'd just leave me walking. <laughs> <laughs> so you couldn't turn around or you were ready to go home. Huh? <laughs> but all the kids, I remember Bernadette too, oh, she'd get so angry because the horse wouldn't go. <laughs> Did many people have horses, or? Is what? Did many people have horses? Oh, yes, yeah. yes. We used Wait. to um, run out and try and get on the, on the runners, you know, when, they, when oh. the men would come downtown. Oh, yeah, we'd hitch a ride. We just took, just for fun of it, we'd hitch a ride in the back of Danny Boyle's one. He had cut her. <laughs> and, and it was like a, one of those fancy little things like you see on Christmas cards. Mm -hmm. And there was like a ledge on the back somehow, yeah. and if you jumped on there, the you'd get a ride all the way to the store. And then you'd wait for somebody that was going the other way and jump That's on the so back. Fast. They didn't mind if you did that, but they didn't want you to tow like with a sleigh behind no. it because they thought it was too dangerous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But and they never um, complained if you just hopped on the back. And one man didn't like it, and he had a big long switch. And um, Margaret Ellen, she used to like to tease him. And she'd say, well, you go on one and I'll go on the other. And I was always afraid. I didn't oh. want to get hit <laughs> with that, you know. But, oh, my God. We did have fun. Yeah, we, we did. It was it was a great place to grow up, I mm -hmm. think. And it really makes you appreciate the conveniences for the rest of your life. I don't think anybody in my generation, with the exception of probably Janet and the people that grew up on the island, but you always had electricity. No, we didn't get electricity on the island until we were five. But they just can't believe that we grew up, you know, like 100 years before them almost. Mm -hmm. Because it used to be... That was like no almost telephone. 100 years between what the mainland was like and what, you know, it was like we were back 100 years mm -hmm. in the past over here when we were young, when it was so isolated. Just ourselves. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And just ourselves to amuse ourselves. And uh, like, um, too, going out at nighttime, you know, like now, my gosh, it just floors me. Um, we didn't go out during the week. Friday night was our night to go out. And then um, we had to be home at 11 o'clock. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Always 11 o'clock. I it? started at 9. I had to be in by 9. Did you? Uh -huh. Well, you got up to 11 before yeah. high school. High so. school. Because yeah. you, you and I, I think your, you and Eleanor and, and Ellen and I were the only ones that ever had to be home by 11 o'clock. We each had a younger sister. Yeah. Eleanor was like two years younger than you, wasn't she? Four. Four? She's okay. Four. Ellen was only one year younger than me, so we kind of did everything together. And were there many opportunities like socializing? Yeah, we said box socials. Did you ever hear of box socials? No. Oh, this is something they used to do in the olden days a lot. Like, uh, you know, you know, like Little House in the Prairie. You can see that on there probably. Um, the girls would make fancy boxes, any mm -hmm. shoe box or anything, and you decorate it all up, and then you all go to the hall, and then the boys with would food. bid. Yeah, with food in it, and fill it with food, and the boys would bid on the boxes. And then if they bought your box, they got to eat with you. Sit so with they'd you. Auction, kind of auction them off. Yeah. Call it a box social. Mm -hmm. That was fun. We used to and spend a lot of time decorating those boxes. And, and you wouldn't let anybody know which one was yours either. You know, mm -hmm. when you brought it down there to the hall, right. they'd yeah. sign them all up, you know. Oh, gosh. What else um, do we used to do besides that? Lots of square dances. We did yeah, a lot of square uh -huh. dancing when we were growing up. That was fun. When, too. um... With live music, you know. Island men would play the fiddle. When, when we were younger, um, for paper dolls, um, we used um, funny papers or papers, you know, that people had. We'd find out who had a paper, and then um, Kay would we'd cut out the the picture of the doll, and Kay would draw for us. Mm. And um, we took piano lessons back then. Yeah, too, oh yeah, the doctor's way. Saturday morning, yeah. fifty cents. <laughs> I don't yeah. remember. I didn't remember how much you paid, but the, the doctor's wife was a, a really good pianist, mm -hmm. and Dr. Palmer was he he deli probably delivered you, he delivered me. I, well, I was born in Charlevoix. Oh, were you? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. He delivered all of the babies for mm -hmm. probably twenty twenty five years up here. All of my brothers and sisters, and and Rod and Ellen and I were born in the bedroom of that farmhouse. So every time I go up there, I get to see the room where I was born. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. 
But Barb was born in Pontiac because I still lived there when Barb was born. And we used to rent a town, a uh, house in town in the winter after my dad got the post office job because they didn't plow the roads and he didn't have a dependable car anyway. So we would live in town. And uh, we were renting Walter Mojan's house when Colleen was born. So she was born in Walter yeah. Mojan's house. That's our younger, younger sister. She was 10 years younger than me, so she was kind of like an afterthought. <laughs> she was a change of life baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that we had all, back then. We had um, good relatives, you know, that would go and visit and eat and yeah. play with, and that just was what we did. Well, mm -hmm. you had a lot of relations now. See, we didn't have, my dad mm -hmm. was an only child, so everybody else was related to everybody else, I think. But all of well, my grandpa, my grandma's siblings, the Macaulays, they all left the island but my grandma. So we didn't have any like first cousins mm -hmm. on the island at all. The mother's mother was from a big family, but all of her, you know, relations, her sisters and her uh, nieces and nephews, they all lived in Pontiac. So. Did you know your grandmother very well at all? Uh, my grandmother that lived in Pontiac. Um, or the one here. Here. Yeah, I knew her quite well. But she was, uh, she seemed a lot older than a grandma. You, she was more like a great grandmother because she and my grandpa were married for 22 years before they had daddy. So, you know, she was, uh, he was, an ordinarily you'd be having gra grandchildren by then, not, you know, mm -hmm. just a child. And then um, she was quite old, as long as I can remember. You know, she was like a really old lady. And, uh, but it was my grandpa that was a, he was a good natured, uh, my, my grandpa was, was my grandma was kind of like you said your grandma was. Mm -hmm. She was always serious and I don't think she was healthy. I think she had, you know, she always, her back was always hurting her. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure it really was because she had worked all of her life and nobody had ever went to a doctor for anything mm -hmm. on the island. You just, whatever you ailment you had, you lived with it. I don't think. I never went to a doctor because I was sick that I can remember when I was growing up. Well, they didn't have a doctor here either for a well, while. Well, Dr. Pan was here. Yeah. I had the measles, but I don't think they took me to the doctor. And aside from that, we were really a healthy group. In fact, Bud always says, he thinks that's why we're all living so long, because we, we've got to be so hardy, but we, you know. But hard work. Yeah, hard work and a lot of time outdoors, and we uh -huh. ate sensibly because that's what we had to eat. We had vegetables and, mm -hmm. and fruit, and you know, we didn't have, we had candy bear, maybe once a week. berries in the summertime. Yeah. We'd have to walk up here. I remember on this corner, it's all built up now with trees and junipers and yeah, it's the store. Yeah, it's But uh, we used to come up here with pails to pick the berries. Well, you know where we used to pick the berries is, oh, there, there used to be a dump before they opened the transfer station. They closed the dump about 10 years ago. But before there was a dump, which I can remember, that was when we lived there in that little yellow house. And uh, Mrs. Gatliff used to say, back there where they put the dump in, that was the best place on Beaver Island to pick strawberries. Pick the so we used to go out there and pick mm -hmm. wild strawberries. They were about this so big. So little. And mm -hmm. you had to pick about 10,000 of them to get a pair <laughs> And, and um, the women, you know, that we'd come up with, they wouldn't leave on t they'd come with a lunch, you know, and they wouldn't leave until their pails were full, till all the containers yeah. were full, you know. Well, they needed that, 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 they yeah. came, you know, that was like uh -huh. their jam for the winter, for and the made, they made pies. Janet, who did you used to come up with? Mary Tom. Mary Tom, yeah. So Mary Tom know. Gatlin. Yeah. Mary yeah. Tom, that her husband was Tom. So that's, that's we all went by nicknames. Because there were a lot of Marys. Mm -hmm. That's why everybody, there were so many... Uh, repetitions of names that everybody had to end up with a nickname. Did you, either of you have nicknames? Oh, I just was always Rosie. And you didn't have a nickname, did you? No. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, Richie has an interesting thing, I think. He's got one of these where the, if they tacked on their dad's name. So mm -hmm. there was uh, Danny, uh, Barney, no, there was Barney O'Donnell. Then his dad was Frank Danny Barney O'Donnell. And then Richie was Richie Frank Danny. <laughs> They, they That's how tradition it's there were, the Irish way of doing it. Yeah, and there were only, you know, there was like O'Donnell's and Gallagher's and McDonough's, and there were only an awful lot of families with the same last name. Mm -hmm. So everybody got a, a nickname. There was like seven Gallagher's here. Mm-hmm. So. Lots of McDonough's. Yeah. 
what was the other the couple of the names that there were a lot of O'Donnell. There were a lot Green. of O'Donnells, yeah. Bill or, Green and Yeah. Yeah, all the the all Johnny go, Green. Yeah. Johnny Green. And Nick Green. Nick Green. Yeah. <laughs> well that was what they called Peter's dad, Nick Green. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then they called him Peter Nick. Yeah. You know? Peter Nick. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That was, I think, the Irish way of doing that. I think so, too. Yeah, I've read stories where they did that. Did you, either of you know of any, like, specifically Irish traditions that sort of your relatives carried over from Ireland to here? On on, uh, my mother's side, um, the name, the first name. They give you the first name and then your second name, and then they call you by your second name. Oh, yeah. so that's how you had to be Janet. You were really and Teresa Janet? Yes. Really? Oh. Yes. I never knew that. I always thought you were Janet Teresa. No? Mm-hmm. And my sister and some of the O'Donnell kids, they're the same way. Hmm. Richie's, um, and, um, and my mother from her mother, from Granny, my Granny. So that was, they would name after the mother or the father, mm-hmm. in the ca- as the case may be. And um, <clears throat> I met a couple from um, Portage, Michigan, and um, the, I met the daughter. She introduced, you know, her daughter, and her name was Catherine. So their first one is always named the mother. Hmm. Her daughter was Catherine. Huh. And all the way down. I didn't know that. was. A, see, we did that with my son, but only because I thought it would be too confusing to have two heralds in the house. Oh. Well, so we named him mm-hmm. Harold because Harold wanted him named after him, and then we called Terry. him by Terry. Yeah. Terry. <laughs> Parents. What else do we know? Oh, the the only thing I was thinking of is the music. Like when Pat Bono came here, he, I I think he came knowing all those songs and mm-hmm. played for so many years for all the dances and everything. All the house probably, parties. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. How were the house parties? They were good, good right? <laughs> <laughs> Lots of fun. Actually, we've had some pretty good house parties right in that farmhouse there, where Richie, you know, where Richie grew up in the yeah, farmhouse. The there. Farm yeah. Home. yeah. They yeah. used to make ice cream for one thing. Mm-hmm. They make homemade ice cream. And yeah. it takes a long time, so you can have quite a party while you're at working. night time and cook it and then eat it at midnight. You know, <laughs> that's what they did. Was it like multi generational? Would everyone go to these house parties? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Kind of, yeah. yeah. They they were. I think there was more than there is nowadays when people mostly stick to their yeah. own generations for parties. Mm-hmm. But killing a chicken is another interesting story. And I don't know if you want to hear that or not. Did you ever hear how they used to kill chickens? <laughs> Did you ever hear of them saying that somebody's running around like a chicken with its head cut off? Yeah. yeah. Well, my dad used to take a chicken and, and he'd have like a stump, you know, a flat on the top, and he'd hold the chicken and he'd put his head on the chicken's head on the stump in his neck and he'd take the axe and chop his head off. Well, the chicken, the body part, didn't die immediately. So it was flipping around the yard for quite a while, like oh. a chicken with its head cut off. Oh and that's God. where that saying came from. Oh. And bleeding. It was, it was an ugly sight because it would be bleeding if it was doing it. Our did you have your own chickens when you were yes, there? Uh-huh. Yeah. I, I took care of the chickens. Elner didn't. You no. know, she wouldn't go in that chicken coop. It was a <laughs> big green building, I remember. <coughs> Saw the chickens. and <laughs> That was yeah, my morning eggs, thing. Yeah, eggs, mm-hmm. yeah. Before going to school, I'd have to go out and pump water and hmm. for the cows and the horses. And as soon as that school bell would ring, I could run fast. <laughs> I could quit could pumping could water. There? Who was it was talking about they used to ring the school bell, and if somebody was coming late, they would ring it for a long, long time yeah. so they wouldn't be marked <laughs> out. Bobby O'Donnell. Was that who it was? It was we had, Bobby. you know, um, McKinley School had a big top thing on it and um the bell was up in there yeah and they yeah. and whoever got to ring the bell that was a big thing too to go up there and do that you put the flag up that uh-huh. was a big thing yeah take it down yeah. Putting up we, the flag. we got uh, little things you know really interested back then because there weren't any big things <laughs> yeah to ring a bell <laughs> what other stories have we got i don't know we have more questions could you talk a little bit more about what it was like living here in the winter time? I, uh, I could tell you a 
Very interesting story, I think. This is one of the ones I told my Bible study that they don't think they believe in. Uh, my, I can't remember for sure if my dad had a horse and sleigh or if it was somebody we knew, because I don't really remember having horses at the farm. But um, I, w- I was only five when we quit living there in the wintertime. But we used to, when we go somewhere, we had an open sleigh, just a flat sleigh, mm-hmm. and they had what they called a cow's hide. I mean, it was a cow's hide, but they made it into a blanket, and it was really, really warm. And Ellen and I, my sister that was just a year younger than me, were the youngest at the time, and they would put us under that cow's hide, and we never could see where we were going because they'd always make us stay right under there to stay warm. So mm-hmm. <laughs> I was that telling them that they didn't. We, we um, <coughs> sheep skin. Did you? Yeah, sheep and, skin um, too. We yeah. still have um, Dad's, and now Brian has it. And Does he? And he has it on the floor in his living room. Really? Uh-huh. Yeah? Huh. Well, they that, just use And it was. It's big and heavy. Mm-hmm. And nice and warm in there. I don't remember being really cold. But you know, those open sleighs with the wind blowing the and smoke coming, there was no shelter at all. So they probably were afraid we'd catch that's what, um, or something. That's what I'd hitch up Fanny, and that's how our sleigh was like that. Yeah. yeah. And then all the kids couldn't get on it easy and get off. But some people had these, what they called cutters, you know, mm-hmm. they're, like I said, like you see on a Christmas card, the fancy. The fancy. fancy. Some like of that. them were fancy. Yeah. Uh-huh. And they'd have the bells. You know, oh, the, yeah. uh, the horse, you know what they said, jingle bells. The I got the bells like. downstairs, yeah. <laughs> Do you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Go get your, bell, your horse bells. Huh? Got a lot of the horse stuff, yeah. I like tradition. <laughs> <laughs> Living here. <coughs> well, we had to order everything um, off the catalog. Right, I was going to ask because you about that. Yeah. Go yeah. any place. And, um, so all your clothes and everything, mm-hmm. or would people make them here at all? Oh yeah, so Oh yeah, they did a lot of sewing. We had sewing and sewing school. and knitting and, quil- and quilting. Yeah, mm-hmm. we took, we learned that they even got an electric sewing machine. Remember Janet when we were in school? I loved that electric sewing machine because we had that old one still there at the farm. That you had to pedal, uh-huh. and it had a li- awful little bobbin that you had to stop like keep every seam and keep doing, keep filling the bobbin mm-hmm. by mm-hmm. hand. You know, instead of the thread going back and forth automatically like it does now you had to thread it back and forth on this it was a long narrow bobbin yeah but i learned to sew we on had it. we um, first we had to learn how to embroidery and do all mm-hmm. that stuff on pillowcases and then uh towels and knitting my grandma taught me mm-hmm. how to knit i never got to be me too to knit it, did she mm-hmm. yeah. yeah and um i remember um like in fourth grade i made a apron i was so proud of that apron. <laughs> Well, then you and like, I... Like, where did we get the material, even? You yeah, know? probably from some uh-huh. dress or something. Yeah. You and I took sewing lessons from Martha Miller up at top in uh, Pat Lavender's store. Remember right? that? Right, uh-huh. Yeah. I made a bolero. And, yeah, I um, think we... I went working that. at um, the store um, in 10th grade. It was called Dick's Store, where the community center is now. That building was a big store. And... Um, and I made a dress because I was going to be working there. Oh. Mm-hmm. I had one pair of blue jeans. And now I go and I see what my grandkids have. <laughs> <laughs> but we didn't wear blue jeans like they do no. now. I mean, that was what you put on to work in. Mm-hmm. You put on a dress or a skirt, skirt or something. Yes. To, or slacks. I had, had a, some nice slacks, too. I had a laugh lately, um, well, a few years back. Um, one of the grandkids said something about, did you ever wear dresses? <laughs> and so I went and I got a picture of me with a, dra- with a dress on. Yeah. I couldn't believe, you know, for now. They don't even own a dress. Oh we, my God. we used to wear dresses when we were little to play in. Mm-hmm. And at the farm, the, the grass never got mowed at the farm unless we had cows and they kept it, you know, eaten down. But usually it was long. And there were always a lot of grasshoppers. And Ellen and I would walk around in those dresses, and those grasshoppers would hop up inside uh-huh. the dress. And oh, that is a terrible feeling. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Not fun at all, because you can't always get them out right away. You know. At the um, the store, um, it sold everything. Caskets, you know, also were in the back room, and night crawlers. Do you know what a night crawler is? A worm. And it's about uh, half an inch fat, big for fishing, for fishing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And oh my gosh, there fish. would be so. I mean, a big thing of 
of night crawlers were kept in this back cooler at the store. Is this Dick Lafnier's store? Dick okay. Lafnier's store. And um, so that was my job, you know, when people came in to get the night crawlers, I'd just go and pick out, you know, how many they wanted. I didn't think <laughs> anything about well, it. You, you know. Your dad being a fisherman, you probably yeah, didn't uh -huh. think too much. We used to go down to the the dig night crawlers in the woods behind the mm -hmm. outhouse. Uh, when the kids, when our kids want to go fishing in, there's always a lot of mosquitoes back in. I used to hate that job. And Harold hated it too, so sometimes I'd do it so he'd take the kids fishing. <laughs> I would do the digging the worms part, yeah. but I didn't like that. Um, um, catching snakes, um, like in our basement, if half of the house was sand, the front part of it. And it seemed every time I'd have to go down there for something, you know, a jar of something or some of the canning things. It always seemed like there was a snake around someplace. So I finally, I just got on to catching them. Mm -hmm. And I put them in a jar and put them out in the garage. We had a gr little garage, you know, off to the side. And um, lined them up there. <laughs> but up at the farm, there are still snakes up there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, um, oh, well, there are snakes up at, at our farm too, but none of them are poisonous. And no. they usually, when you just as you walk along, they're scurrying away. Mm -hmm. I'm not really that afraid of snakes, mm -hmm. because when we had the outhouse, usually one or two of them went scurrying away when you were walking down there in the morning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> as long as they didn't come toward me, I didn't know. But for them to still be living, you know, up at the farmhouse. The, the, the same snakes you put in the jars? No, no, no. Oh. But I mean the snakes. <laughs> what what the did snakes, they eat? No. Oh. Um, they're still up there, yeah. and um, different, when we first retired and came back here, we went to Grand Rapids, I went to Aquinas College, and Rich was in the service, and um, so when we came back to retire, we were going to live there, fix it all up and live there, which we did, and um, we started to. <laughs> which farm? Oh, the big farm the farmhouse, right, right yeah. here, yeah, yeah. And um, the snakes were around summertime, you know. So people would come up to see the place, and so once they knew Clara Cull was coming up, her and Bud, and the snake was around. Well, anyway, I went and got the snake and killed it, and I left it out on the on the little sidewalk coming in. Mm. And she came in through the, the little gate thing there, and oh my gosh, you could hear her <laughs> scream. He was, he was dead, you know, he was all curled up dead, but oh my gosh. He didn't come, he was still a snake. Uh -huh. <laughs> Then we had one coming up, um, well, the icebox in the house, they had a hole um, in the floor where the water would drip down from the ice. Mm -hmm. And um, and the sewing machine was in that corner. <laughs> now, the sewing machine is still an old sewing machine is still in that corner. So one day a snake was coming up out of the basement um, at, through that hole. Oh, for Pete's sake. Uh-huh. <laughs> So anyway, he so like you did, when you decided you didn't want to fix that house up and live in it, <laughs> I guess you could have plugged the hole. <laughs> yeah, that's what he did. Rich yeah. did that. Then. Mm -hmm. But we got that snake, and and um, I was hanging on. He came up, and and he was outside, and I started yelling. And by the time he got in, I had the snake by the tail. I didn't want to grab it by the head or anything, you know. It was a good sized snake. He's laughing at me. What are you gonna do with this? <laughs> <laughs> I said, it's yours. <laughs> You're a snake. Um, so you wore um, like dresses every day? Was that it? Yeah, I mean, usually like one, one, I mean, we didn't have a lot of dresses. Right? No. We usually had two of everything. At least we did. I don't know if you did or not, but we had two pairs of socks and two pairs of underwear and, and, and two dresses that fit us because, mm -hmm. you know, and, and of course they got passed down from sister to sister. You were the oldest. You probably didn't mm -hmm. get that so much. But um, one one t could be washed, you know, so one set could be washed. And but do you want to hear a funny way about how we used to take baths? Sure. <laughs> uh, there were four or six of us at the time because Colleen wasn't born yet, and um, we would hit get out a big galvanized a tub. That's what they used to use for the washing too. The round. Yeah, the round. Big, they were about that big around. You know, about it had handles on it. And you had to heat the water up before you got the bath. So you heat the water up on the stove, and then we. Would would close off the dining room at the farmhouse because there was a heat a heater in stove in there so it was nice and warm, and we'd either stay in the living room or the kitchen, 
and we take turns starting with the littlest, and Colleen, uh, not Colleen, because she wasn't, the Ellen would get her bath, and then I would get that all in the same water, mm -hmm. and then Bud, and then Barb, and then Mother, and then Daddy. We'd all get our baths in the sink. Can you imagine how that water was by the time we got there? But that was, that was it. This was Saturday, Saturday night ritual. Uh -huh. You did that on Saturday night, put your clean clothes on. I used yeah. to put my hair in pin curls and listen to the radio. I got to listen to the radio after bath time Saturday night. Oh, really? For church. Mm -hmm. Oh, we didn't have a radio at the farm. In the dark. That, uh, well, we didn't have electricity. We did have a radio. So maybe you heard this story Rod, story Rod might have told you, but my dad liked to listen to Father Coughlin, who was a priest who was very controversial back during the, the, the Depression and the Second World War, that era. Every Sunday night he would come on. So Daddy would go out and he would take the battery out of the car and take it in the house and hook it up to the radio. So he and Danny Boyle, the next door neighbor, would come over and they'd listen to Father mm -hmm. Coughlin every night. My grand... Mm -hmm. um, the grandparents, the Gallagher's, mm -hmm. um, he would come up Sunday night, yeah. and um, we were very quiet. He did not yeah. make any noise. That was the one radio mm -hmm. program for the week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. But you know, we didn't miss any of that stuff because we never knew it happened. Mm -hmm. It didn't even know it existed for a long time, and so that's just how we lived. We didn't miss all of that. No, um, we were poor, but we didn't know it. Right. My now, brother. nowadays, you, you, everyone says, you know, oh, you were so poor. And I remember, too, our closet was about the size of my sister and I. She was on one side, and I was on the other side, you know. And um, what I wore on Monday to school, I'd put in the back of it. Mm -hmm. And then Tuesday, you know, <laughs> that's how we... She was very organized, too. Uh-huh. Okay. So that's For um, Christmas, we'd get something to wear and um, a game or something. Yeah. I remember. Yeah. None of the stuff like my grandkids. <laughs> More stuff in the, and they oh. don't play with it. I mean, they get so much stuff in mm -hmm. They don't need Terrible. it. We appreciate stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even now. We you know, save. and. But Some of us are worse than others. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, um, I keep telling people, we lived on an island in you know, with an airplane or a boat once in a while coming, mm -hmm. well, in the summertime. But how do you have to, you know, make do with what you have? Mm -hmm. You know, like I keep taking my same um, bag with my lunch in it, you know, <laughs> every yeah. time. And the gal says, oh, are you doing that again, you know? <laughs> well, it's still good, you know. <laughs> so um, what were some of the other shops they had in town when you were growing up? They had two grocery stores at the time because Dick Blaffner's grocery store and, and McDonald's, they were about, I mean, they got one got as much business as the other. And even when that store was in existence, when it started changing hands, there, you know, there weren't that many people shopped at Dick's store anymore. It, it, gradually it got so. Now there's only one except for the gas station. I guess you can buy a little bit of groceries in there, yeah. huh? Mm -hmm. yeah. They have a lot of stuff. Do they? Frozen yeah. stuff. Oh. Ice cream things. I have to look in there because pizzas. Mm. Yeah. Sometimes when you want it, need something, then McDonald's isn't open. They're <laughs> open until nine. nine. The station. Is it? Oh, mm -hmm. okay. The I summertime now. But as far as other shops, we had a couple of bars, mm -hmm. and the two grocery stores. Was we that didn't it? need them. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dick's yeah. out in, in front of Dick's store. It said, if we don't have it, you don't need it. Mm -hmm. That's what his sign said <laughs> up on the top of them. <laughs> so I he guess had some souvenirs in there. Yeah. And he had some candles, I remember, buying candles. And the candy. Yeah. Penny candy. That's what my kids remember about coming up here. Mm -hmm. Grandma would give them penny candy so they could go up and buy. I used then to they just hate that I'd have to get down on the floor because it was always on the bottom of oh, the... Oh, when the kids would yeah, come in. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, I don't want that one. No, that other one. <laughs> what they wanted. Another question we had, and my professor was actually interested in, was sort of, um, we know a lot about um, the fishing industry and all the big industries, but we were sort of curious about the role of women on the island. Like, um, we know that they did a lot, but not a lot of people have talked about them. Like, so. 
the women? Yeah. What were their roles? Well, there was Mrs. Redding. She was a seamstress. Um, she lived where it was King Strang's house, right, where Mrs. Redding lived. And um, I know my mother had some coats that had been her coats that she outgrew. And um, so she, we took those coats, and Ellen and I went to Mrs. Redding, and mm -hmm. she made coats for us out of those mm -hmm. coats. But she actually was a really good seamstress. I mean, all of the women on the island, they could sew, but she was more like a tailor, I guess. You know, where she then Martha along. Miller, she came along. Yeah, but that was yeah. you know, quite a quite a few Late, years later. later. Yeah. Um, what else? What other professions did women have besides teaching on the island? I'm trying to think. You mean long time ago? Mm -hmm. When we were growing um, up. Yeah. Oh, when we were growing yeah, up. Yeah, when we were growing up. Um, Nelson's wife had um, a hat. Um, shop, like in my mother's time. Oh, you know, oh did hat. she? Uh -huh. Yeah. Nels uh, Lafreniere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, Nels, um, oh, his, for, his first wife. Yeah. Sophia, I Sophia. think. Sophia. Sophia. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I saw there's something else. The, the O'Briens had that ice cream oh, parlor yeah. for a while. Um, where Crook you know, Shanks are. Yeah, where Crook Shanks are. They, they got that kind of an ornate blue house. It's down uh, from where um right near where the Vets Memorial is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Where right where you go up that hill, it's got a lot of pretty flowers yeah. and everything. That well, that used to be an ice cream parlor in there, and, mm -hmm. and she ran it along with him. You know, as and much, books. I think she was the one that waited on you when you went in there. And the books, too. Did she have books in there, too? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the shillelagh. We used to go to the shillelagh. Uh, what was it, the shillelagh? Um, that was that store next to um the store. Oh, Next um, to McDonough's store? No, next to Dick's. Oh, what was what was um, it now? Let's see, Buster and Rita Elms had that. The Shillelagh? Yeah. That had ice cream and Oh, really? And, yeah, okay, I don't remember that there. one. It was right up from the boat dock. Okay. Yeah, I don't and remember And over that. at the point was, uh, Felix had a log cabin. Yeah, that was after we were growing up, though, because yeah. he, I can remember when they built they those. Had, yeah. we, um, it had music, so we could skate over there, and, and he had hot dogs. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And then one summer, <laughs> he um, started putting tomatoes on the hot dog. Oh, I just <laughs> loved <laughs> it. <laughs> that you could see he had a sign that you could see across the harbor, and it, it just said, eat, and really big neon sign, eat. It was eat. That was an eat restaurant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's great. But I don't think, I can't think of any other uh, women that were professionals except for like the doctor's wife who they came to, from Canada. Mm -hmm. They weren't original islanders, but she, she was a musician. Yeah, Suzanne Dr. Palmer. She taught piano lessons. And uh, most women were just... And manners. Women. We had to hold our hands just so... Oh, yes, and we couldn't step on the threshold. Remember, the, the doctor would paint the woodwork quite... And the threshold that you came in was white painted white, and every time we went there, we had to step over, or, or what did she call him? She called him Daddy, didn't she? Uh, yeah. Daddy was the And the funniest thing to me was she would give these recitals, and you know, at the farmhouse, we didn't have screens. We had fly paper, you know, fly paper is. But there were always flies around, and it was not a big deal. And a fly got in the house in the middle of her reception of a recital, and you'd think it was. <laughs> I don't know what you think it was, some be. kind of a monster or something. <laughs> they made so much fuss about killing that one fly. So they were really, really fussy. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, we had to... Strict. They put on, she put on little plays. She put on Pure Ghent one time, I remember. And, and, um, uh, the mu I there's a music pi picture of us down at the library. Have you seen that? No. And the music room up on that side. In fact, Barb's in it. Is she? Uh-huh. Yeah? Her older sister. I don't remember about taking piano lessons, but she did. And, she um, piano Elner lessons. And Elner and Bertha and Margaret Allen and me, and I'm standing there with my hands the right way. I think <laughs> maybe I do. I have seen that picture. Yeah. For a lot of people, a lot of kids, did they get involved with music? Was everyone pretty... A lot of them uh, picked up music on their own. Yeah. Like like the Palmers, they uh -huh. always, I think they were born, learned to play the piano, or known a piano or harmonica. Because it was a uh, <laughs> Russell Palmer, it's Eddie Palmer's older brother. Eddie's the one that plays that old music now all the time. But mm -hmm. he he was the musician when we mm -hmm. were growing up. Because yeah. he was our contemporary. Ride around. Yeah. It, they'd have their guitars and we'd ride around in cars and sing. And harmonicas, uh -huh. guitars and harmonicas. 
And then when the Kennys moved to Ireland, the accordion was brought in because Marilyn played the accordion. I always wanted to play the accordion. It seems like I if you could play the piano, it would have been easy. I know, but it wasn't I, every once in a while, we're in a flea market or at a flea shop, you know, and I keep asking, you know, about them. But <laughs> they're 500 bucks for, really? yeah, wow. for, you know, wow. you know, hmm. so, but, um, I enjoy playing the piano, and now I'm, I got grand girl, girls that are playing, and mm. that's fun, and they're really enjoying it. Are they? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I yeah, like playing the it. piano too, but we never, we always had a piano at the farmhouse, but we didn't live there year round, so I never got to practice that much. When we were in town, we didn't have a piano, so you really can't learn to play no. the piano if you mm -hmm. can't practice. So, <laughs> but I always wished I would have, and I almost bought a piano after we were married to oh, really? start taking piano oh. lessons, but so I decided relaxing. to go back to college instead, and I never did do that. Mm -hmm. um, my dad built our, our house, and he had a dining room in it. The kitchen was small, but the dining room was long, and um, the door going into the living room. The living room was across the front of the house. So we had this piano they got from Traverse City, because Ellen and I both took piano, my sister and I took piano lessons. So when we got older and started having fellas coming in, um, they couldn't shut the door from the dining room into the living room, because the piano was... <laughs> all that was in that room was um, the table, and then m Mom had um, the china closet. But that got moved out, and the piano went there. That's how big this dining room was. Uh -huh. But you couldn't shut the door because the little edging on the top of that piano hit the door. Mm. <laughs> so my mother, she did everything. She sawed that off. <laughs> so they could shut the door. So the when you could entertain had, your boyfriend, uh -huh, oh, that's right. the <laughs> or like on Sunday nights, you know, for the um, to listen to the radio. Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. yeah. So was was church a big part of the social life? Oh, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that was. Mm -hmm. I I don't know, I think that was the very center of the social mm -hmm. life when we were growing. Of course, everybody on the island was Catholic, just about. One, uh, one or two families. Yeah. The Nurkles and... Um, the Nurkles, yeah, but they, they were just here for a while because they yeah. had postcards, yeah. But, yeah, that uh, was a big part. And we were kind of, excuse me, we were kind of divided, too, um, from uptown and downtown, um, where the light plant used to be. Well, where the, um, the park is now, the Veterans Park, mm -hmm. we used to have a light plant down that way. And um, us, we couldn't go down past that. Really? We, we could go down as far as Canahans. Oh, really? We couldn't go around uh -huh. to the point? We couldn't go down yeah. by the Martins. Yeah. <laughs> Why is that? <laughs> they, did they think it was dangerous? Or they, they were kind of rough, I think. Far? Well, they, yeah, they had kind of a rough reputation when they were growing up. But they all turned Didn't out Didn't want to get yeah. into any fights. Yeah. Or, yeah. We also had like so. a, a layer of people who um, obeyed the rules and didn't obey the rules. I guess that's one way of putting it. Because like I was saying, Janet and I used to, I used, and, and our sister said, go <laughs> home at a certain time. Well, there were uh, some girls mm -hmm. that d they evidently didn't have a curfew. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it got to be like, you know, the guys would hang out with us for the first part of the evening mm -hmm. and take mm -hmm. us that's home. Then <laughs> they'd go hang out with the girls who could stay out later and drink yeah. a beer with uh -huh. them. <laughs> That was yeah. another thing, though. We didn't dare drink any alcohol. Mm. I we didn't drink till I was 21. Oh, yeah, I didn't either. No, I can still, still remember not having my first or champagne. Smoking. And, yeah. No smoking. No. Well, we never had, I had never had a desire to smoke. Mm -hmm. I used to wish I did smoke because when I was in nurses' training, uh, there were 300 of us, and I think there were three of us that didn't smoke. So I felt like I was an oddball. So I thought, I'm going to learn to smoke. And ah. I couldn't stand the taste. I, I got that taste in my mouth. I couldn't get rid of it all day long. And I didn't have a lot of money. And I thought, I'm not going to waste my money on something I don't even like. But I really did. And then when we were first married, we would play cards. And oh. I'd be the only one that wasn't smoking and feel like an oddball. Uh -huh. I really thought now that I didn't. Mm -hmm. I went to college. And, of course, they had a smoker's room downstairs. Yeah. You know, and that was just, you know, great. And um, so, no, you got to learn how to smoke. No, come on. So I tried it, but um, 
That was it. No. <laughs> <laughs> I did not like that. I have tried things. Yeah. So, um, could you talk a little bit about, if you don't mind, about like what you know, courtship and dating was like during your teen years on the island at all? Was there any of that going on? There was a lot of just uh, uh, the guys driving by and saying, "Come on for, come on for a ride." And then of course I had the rule that I couldn't get in a bo- car with a boy, so that didn't work out too. But that was a lot of it. In fact, I think it was when you and I and Ellen had started dating that we got the idea that they should come pick us up. Mm-hmm. It was a novelty on Beaver Island. But they went along with it. Yeah. They did. Mm-hmm. Robert and Richie yeah. and Peter and Peter. Uh, yeah. All all those guys and uh, Eleanor's boyfriends when she got a little older, she was a little younger than us, but um so the dating was mostly just uh kinda getting together. We'd ride around and mm-hmm. we'd all, all the girls would pile in a car on Sunday uh-huh. afternoon. For that was our uh, recreation time Sunday afternoon, and um, we'd ride around the island, and the boys, of course, would be all piled in another car, riding around the island, and we'd Toot. usually meet Toot. up. Toot. Yeah, <laughs> we would usually meet up somewhere and teach each other more than anything. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Pretend we're going to throw cameras at each other. Singing. Yeah. Singing. And lots of singing. And dancing too. Yeah. Sometimes outdoor, outdoor Sometimes, parties. Sometimes um, when um early probably ninth and tenth grade, um, I'd have to be home on Sunday at four o'clock for a chicken dinner. And probably that's when I started, you know. Oh, I didn't like that at all. Well, you know what, we <laughs> used to have dinner a little earlier, but my dad was one of these people who ate very slowly, and then he had his coffee, and then he poured his coffee in his saucer so it would cool off, and then he poured it back, and it was a long ritual. And we girls would be wanting to get up, clear the table, and get the dishes done so we could go have some fun. And he would get really mad if we took the dishes before he was done eating. He, that was one thing. You didn't rush him through dinner. <laughs> Do you want coffee? I'm sorry I didn't even offer you anything. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> We're fine, thank you. Um, talking about the dishes at their house, um, when we were, were, something was going on that we wanted to go to, um, well, if I asked my folks, you know, and they said no, well, okay, that was no, was just no, the first no. So then we'd talk about it, you know, at school or something, and, well, why don't you ask your folks? So then she'd ask, and they'd say yes. <laughs> <laughs> so then we'd go back, you know, and um, usually after I got on to, after Daddy ate was a good time <laughs> to um, approach him. Good mood, yeah. I still do that with you. With, um, do that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Give them a good yeah. meal. And um, <laughs> so then we'd say, well, um, you know, Rosie and Ellen, say, they can go. Well, and then, then the time and who are you going to be with? R- lots of questions, you know. <laughs> but we'd get to go. So we went back but and that forth. Up for you, Janet. Mm-hmm. You know, but you then we'd get down there and, and they were still doing their dishes, you know. We'd be oh. so excited because we got to go. Oh, we'd have to finish up the dishes yeah. for uh-huh. It was a long process because we mm-hmm. didn't have hot running water and so you had to heat up the water and you had to they wash were, the dishes. They, uh, yeah. This pan on the stove and you used a bar of and after soap because we didn't have dish detergent back mm-hmm. then. No. So it would kind of get greasy water and you had to stand by this... Um, on the back part of the wood stove, it, it would stay warm. The water would stay warm, but not be too hot. But it was mighty hot standing there washing dishes. Mm-hmm. The heat from the stove, so. and we didn't have the any oven. nice stainless steel pans that were easy to clean. And we didn't have a lot of extra water uh, to soak pans before mm-hmm. it, was, it was quite an ordeal washing dishes. I hated to do the silverware, and so by that time I. Say I have to go practice the piano. Oh, I thought you were <laughs> going to say I have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> I still have that Bell's nap to soap. Do you? Do you know really? what that is? Mm. It's the best thing for poison ivy. Oh. oh. Yes. That's the kind of soap we use for, uh, I think they use it for washing clothes with, too. Very strong soap. And it does have a very distinctive smell. Mm-hmm. Got used for a lot it's of way stuff. Way up high, up there to reach it. Uh, Who's the tall one? Are you tall? I'm not that. I can try. It is. Um, I just keep it in case of someone getting the um, poison ivy. You know, they go over fishing to the other island over there. Oh yeah. And poison ivy. I didn't know that was good for poison ivy. Oh yeah. I 
to wash her hair and everything with oh, her. Yeah. So, yeah. Shampoo was a real luxury. So one time I decided. Um, had, go ahead. My dad had um, the farm up at the stone house, and then we had the farm downtown too with the cows mm -hmm. and horses. And um, so in the fall, he would they would go on the boat and um, sell the cows over in Traverse City to make some money for the winter, and they'd buy their um, you know winter stuff. Um, and that was always before Halloween. You'd come back with Hall package of Halloween candy, I remember. <laughs> but um, that was a big thing, to get some money for the winter, mm -hmm. you know. But we cut, or um, we had the beef, you know, too, and mm -hmm. butcher, we did, we did butcher a, a the cows. Quarter, a hind quarter of mm -hmm. beef, and, and it freezes. Mm -hmm. As soon as it got cold, and, you know, they'd be a butcher, so it would freeze. If you left it outside, it would, they'd wait till it was cold enough. And my dad used to get a saw out and saw the piece off because he didn't want to thaw, thaw out the whole thing or it would mm -hmm. spoil. So he'd saw a piece off and bring it in and just with a regular <laughs> and wood saw. It was, he had, you know. um, my dad had the fish boxes and um, that's what he put outside that window and that was all full of the meat, really? you know, frozen yeah. in the fish box. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He cut it up ahead of time then, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, my dad, we'd cut it up when we were going to use it. And we did a lot of canning, I remember, too, peeling, peeling, you know. Oh, my mother did and can tomatoes. And she made good homemade strawberry jam, though. I love that. That's about all she canned that I can remember. But we didn't grow a lot of our own food, either. But the garden. Then, the once, garden. Yeah, we, we didn't have much uh, of a garden. But um, once you got it, the job at the post office, and we could afford to buy food, so... <laughs> The sailors used to come home too, and they would come home with games for us, you know, mm -hmm. for the winter and candy. Yeah, that was kind uh, of kind of a part of the dating ritual, I guess. Yeah, because those guys uh -huh. would work. That was sailors. a big big thing when the sailors. Yeah, they were they were home. gone for nine months at a time, and they just on the home freighters. Home. And they would ha have quite a bit of money saved up because they were on the boat all the time. Bud was saying they didn't make a lot of money, but they weren't able to spend it. Mm -hmm. So by the time they come home for the winter, they were got it. it. They seemed pretty rich to us. So there was a whole new crop of mm -hmm. people to, to date. <laughs> that, was a, that was a big thing. Yeah, yeah, it was. A lot of the older gals married them. They did. Yeah. yeah. So that was good. I never thought it would be much of a deal being married to somebody that was gone nine months out of the year. Uh huh. Didn't didn't want that. Mm. What other questions? Um. Well, who were some of the, you know, real characters on the island when you were growing up? Like, any of the old-timers or anything? Well, Raymond Lewis was a character. Sammy Floyd. Yeah. Raymond Lewis was a, a Native American Indian, and he uh, he was, a, he was a, a brother to this one that was Josie in my class. Who, you know, she was a very intelligent, really nice person, but he was a little retarded, and, but he was a nice guy, really good natured guy. So when we got married on the island, the church was up on the hill by the cemetery there, and um, it was, we got married in January, middle of January, and it was a blizzard. It was almost like a blizzard. It was snowing really, really hard. So Raymond Lewis decided that the bride should not have to walk in the snow. So he shoveled snow all through the ceremony from the door of the church to where our car was parked. He just stayed out there and kept it because it was snowing that hard. And I oh thought that gosh. was that was so nice. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. But he was kind of a character. He was mm -hmm. kinda like Budger. Not only mm -hmm. Budger and did you you don't know Budger. Um <laughs> <laughs> he was Harry well, is his you name. tell you tell oh yeah, and, and his and his brother was Russell and we always called him Cuckoo. <laughs> we did? Mm -hmm. I never even knew his name was Russell for a while. Tell him about Pier about Budger because you were around more when he was, you know, in more recent years than I have been. What was he like? He was um, definitely a character. Yeah. He he would tell jokes and, and then he wanted money. He was asking for money. And I mean, finally he was even up to like twenty dollars. Just Really? Mhm. Mm asking everybody, strangers. We and he didn't strangers. Tell. You're strangers. Mm -hmm. Did didn't and, uh, he tell kind of nasty jokes? Too? Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. dirty jokes, yeah. But he, so. I, I don't know, what's it, he held a job for a lot of years on the mainland on before the, he came back here. He was in the freighter. Yeah, mm -hmm. and um, 
I always thought he was really retarded, but he lost magic then if he He knew what he was doing. Job, he knew know? what he was doing. Yeah. Uh, Joe Mapro was another character. What that, did he um, do on the island? Did you hear about him? I've Joe heard Mapro. him mentioned, but I forget. Could you tell me about it? <laughs> well, all I know is um, when he'd be in the bar, he'd want someone to take him home. So they'd take him home and they'd stop at the store or something or whatever. and. He wouldn't go in the house, he'd just go right out, you know, get another ride or get back <laughs> uptown again. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. Huh. Uh, there were some characters, some people said my dad was a character, especially in later years, I guess. <laughs> I like to watch it, um, them dance. That's her yeah. mom. and My mom and dad, when they... When they always dancing. When daddy died, Sherry um, Timsack. <sighs> wrote her um, uh -huh. hit the obit, a little obit in the Be Beaver Island paper, and she said they were um, Beaver Island's Fred, Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers. Mm -hmm. oh. yeah. They cool. were, they were really good dancers. And Eddie Farmer, he always tells me this story. When he used to be playing, and he, he knew Daddy's favorite waltz, so he'd always play Daddy's favorite waltz. And he'd noticed before they got up to dance where they were sitting because there used to be chairs along the edge of the hall for people to sit, you know, when they weren't dancing. Mm. So he would make sure the music stopped when they got back to the chair so they wouldn't have to walk all the way oh. across the floor to get to their wow, chair. Wow, what a good yeah. idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When um, my dad died, when I heard that, I thought, oh, I won't be able to dance with him anymore. Oh. Mm. That was something. I, re I really miss my dad because he was mm -hmm. such a character. He was a character. He was definitely a, a, a distinct person in, I don't know, he was just in the way you said he very did slow things. and deliberate. Mm -hmm. and Billy McDonough is always telling me, or he used to tell me how he made the sign of the cross. He'd go, name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And he said, you know, he always made a big production of it. Mm -hmm. And we always were a few minutes late for church. And my mother always said it was because Daddy wanted to make a grand entrance. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> to church. <laughs> we always say, sat in the same spot. They had the little thing in church with your name on it. Mm -hmm. Well, you rented. You used to pay pew rent. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For yeah, that pew. Rod has a pew, right? Yeah. Yeah. And he's still got my grandpa's name on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We don't have to pay pure rent anymore. No. Yeah, you know, that was in addition to the collection back then. But in the collection, you'd probably maybe put in a dime or something, and you know, not back much. Then it was yeah. not like now. Mm -hmm. yeah. But they always managed to keep that church going financially. Mm -hmm. So they must we used to sing fun. up in the choir. Yeah, mm -hmm. also, I suppose whether you could sing or not, you sing in the choir because there were such few of us. <laughs> Jan was a good singer. Mm -hmm. I never was a good singer. Your mother was a good singer too. Yes. Right up till the she end, to too, sing. she used to sing Vilia. She used to sing Vilia, and that's the only time I ever heard that name. And where Barb is, oh, I'm getting off the track, but there's a girl named Vilia there. Oh. She's the, like the recreation director. You if should ask her if she knows that mm. song. Yeah, I should. I should. Yeah, she's oh a really my. nice person. It was a pretty song. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So when you played music or heard music from the Fiddlers, was it all, what kind of music was it? Was it? Traditional Irish music, or was it more Irish? Mm -hmm. Irish, yeah, Irish. Jigs. Yeah, yeah. Yep. yeah and then uh, uh, years went by, kind of country music got kind of mixed in with it, but mm -hmm. mostly it was old Irish. That's why I think when Pat, in fact, I read about him one time where he he had traveled a lot before he came to live on the island, and in the work he was doing or something was he was picking up all these songs, you know, to how the melodies mm -hmm. and the two and the lyrics and how everything. So when he came, by the time he came to the island, he had quite a repertory of music. music. Yeah. He used to come down to my grandparents. Um, they lived not too far from him. Every night, and they'd play music. He'd play music there. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Granny and Papa's. Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Every night, he'd well, come down there. Didn't they live right next door to you, right there? And, uh, no, they were out in the country there. Oh, okay. Piper's Corner, up where Mary and Ron are. Well, who was Aunt Maggie? My granny. Your granny, is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Didn't they live in town next to you? Oh, yeah, but that was in their later years. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. When those boys came to high school. 
They didn't tell what the boys came back to. Did they get their, house, their house burnt. My house burnt. A lot of houses oh. used to burn. Oh, yeah, your house burned right to the ground, didn't it? Big places. Their place was so big. We used to go up there a lot. And there weren't, uh, there was no fire department no. at all uh-huh. available. I mean, when, once a house started, it pretty much yeah. was gone. Because uh-huh. I can remember to periodically we would go out and watch a house burn. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like a... The sparks yeah. and everything. Did people didn't have running water, so they didn't mm-hmm. have hoses, so they could hose them down, and no fire department. A lot no. of houses burnt. All wood, all wooden houses. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you just had to wait, <laughs> wait it out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, pretty much. And mm-hmm. yeah, I don't know when your mom and dad's house burned. You weren't. They were no living longer living on no, the island. No, no, it was empty. But did they still own it? Um, no, my dad and Bing had it then. Oh. They were living there when the book? No, um, they didn't. They, you know, they built that motel yeah. first. Yeah. What was before that? Oh, okay. So it burned. Mother and Daddy were over in Charlotte by mm. then. And the big house um, that the grand great grandparents built out on um, Front Lake there, that burnt too on the Fourth of July night, lightning and big storm. I was thinking the other day. Um, when the storms and we had the um, horse and cows, you know, not too far away from our house downtown there, and in the storms you could hear them kicking, you know, and everything. Yeah. And one July, I counted how many storm lightning storms, you know, because Elmer didn't like that. She'd mm-hmm. take off, you know, into mother and daddy's bedroom, <laughs> and I, I'd be in that room, you know, by yourself, listening huh? to the the <laughs> pounding outside there. But I counted seven. Um, lightning storms. Lightning strikes, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm. One, one summer. Huh. And I was thinking, we haven't had that yet. You know, this is July. <laughs> we haven't yeah, had yeah. that. We just had, since we got here, just that one good rain. Mm-hmm. That one morning. Yeah. So, back to your childhood. What was your fondest memory of childhood? Or what was your favorite season here on the island? Christmas. Christmas. <laughs> Um, we had, we'd always get something to wear, and so we could open that gift up first before we went to midnight mass. That we always mm-hmm. went to midnight mm-hmm. mass, and um, I got my my um, ring, and I got a a certain um, white band, or well, it was yay thick, like a hat. That was the big thing one year, and um, oh, and the doll. We used to play with dolls a lot. Yeah, we used to play with dolls uh-huh. a lot too. We used to, mother used to, on a nice day, she'd put a blanket under the ironwood tree there. You know, it was uh-huh. kind of warm, so we'd be in the shade, and Ellen and I'd sit there by the hour playing, playing with the playing dolls. With I think probably my favorite season was fall, when the trees car- turned color. It was so pretty. Mm. And drive around, and I loved the elm trees. I still like elm trees, even though the Dutch elm disease killed most of the ones. but. I think there's still some elm trees on the island that live. Anyway, that I think that was probably my favorite season. I never liked the hot weather all that much, but spring and fall were nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're um back to school. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> never really back to see everybody. <laughs> I don't know what you my know. favorite yeah, memory was though. So I have to think about that for a while. I know what it was. It was when we moved to town when I was fourteen years old and we got to come downtown and live there year round because not only were all the kids there, but the beach was there. Because mm-hmm. we used to get really lonesome out there on Darky Town Road with uh, no kids around. Mm-hmm. For that one, when the Altmans lived there for a couple of summers. But aside from that, we were. So that was my my most pleasant memory, I think, of growing up, was moving to town. Well, moving to town. Isn't that yeah. something to say to some city thing? Oh, this is going to be something. Yeah, we used, we used <laughs> They're to. They're not going to believe us. <laughs> used to move every, every before school started. We would come down for, well, let's see, from the time I was five till I was 14, so for about nine years. We rented a house in town, a different house. So we lived in three different houses there. And there was one right where McDonough's store is. They owned a little house, mm-hmm. and we rented that from them. And then we lived in Walter Rogens, but first place we lived was that place that you see when you first come in on the boat, and it's like a big old barn. What's that called now? Uh, used to be um, the resale. 
Stanley Floyd's place. Yeah. Yeah, where the, where the resale stop used to. And that was where we lived upstairs, and Daddy had sheep downstairs, and my mother hated that. Oh, but oh, we, for some reason, we must have gotten two lambs and no mother because we fed the lambs with the baby bottle, and we got a big kick out of doing that, Ellen, mm. because we could do that as much as we wanted. We could feed those. It probably took a lot of time to keep those little yeah. lambs there. But that was a big deal when we got to come down. Then, then um, when my grandma and grandpa passed away, they lived in that house that uh, belongs to, who owns that house now? It used to be the little yellow house that Seven Sisters was in there for, oh, I know Rickskers own mm-hmm. it now. Bad. But anyway, um, then we got to, uh, we could walk to school, and so we could live there. It was a half mile walk to school, but we would walk. And we didn't think that was so far because it was mm-hmm. two miles from the farm. So that seemed pretty close. Mm-hmm. And we used to walk winter or summer, and no matter how cold it got, it, and it, it's funny now when I hear the weather report, on the, they're so worried about the kids waiting at the bus stop because it's going to be, you know, 20 <laughs> degrees. And one, one couple of stretch of days, we had 20 below zero, and nobody ever said, you girls better not go to school today. It's too cold out there. They just bundled you up mm-hmm. and you went. And um, some of the boys from the country, you know, the, the country guys, it was uh, Walter McCauley and a couple of other guys were uh-huh. with them coming by with a horse and sleigh, and they picked us up, and boy, were we, we, Glad we really that. appreciated that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But we really didn't mind. I don't remember minding. We used to walk home after school. You just did it. Yeah. Well, you knew, yeah. <laughs> didn't know any different. In the summer when we'd walk from the farm, to town when we still lived out there in the summer for quite all those years we rented in town we'd still go back to the farm in the summer and Ellen and I would want to go swimming so we'd walk to town and we if it was really hot we would walk really fast through the sunny part and then oh. when we got under the shade of a tree uh-huh. we'd walk Trees. really slow because <laughs> it would be so hot but we'd be good and warm for our swim and then we would wait there until the post office closed at 5 o'clock and we'd drive back out mm-hmm. with my dad. So that was a good way. That's another thing we used to do when we were little, when we were still living up there all the time. And Daddy would come home and um, he had an old car with a running board. You know what a running board is? It's like a, a step up, only it's on the outside of the car. It's okay. like a long step on the outside of the car after the doors are closed. Okay, okay. yeah. So Ellen and I, about half hour before Daddy was to come home. Mother probably wanted us to get us out of the house, but she said, it's about time for Daddy to come home. So we'd go out to the gate. You know how long that lane is going in from the gate to the house. Mm-hmm. We'd walk out there, and we'd swing on that gate, which we weren't supposed to do because it kind of made the gate droop. You know, they weren't really that. We were too heavy to be swinging on, but it was too much of a temptation, and we would do it anyway. <laughs> Waiting for Daddy to come home, and then we would ride with him from the gate to the house, and we'd stand on the running board to hold on. And that was our big excitement Same of thing. the day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Of course, then it was dinner time, too. That was always good when we got in there. <laughs> I, um, um, my dad had that farm out at the Stone House, and, of course, he was on the dock with the fishing, you know, fishing coming in, a lot of fish back then. I mean, tons of fish they were getting in. And um, so I got to drive, learn how to drive, and... Um, we had Indians working out at the farm, you know, haying and putting mm-hmm. up stuff. And so I could drive out there with their lunch. And it was always mm. um, that, well, back in the store, we used to have that big round, big round things, the bologna and the big round. We used to have to cut that up for people, you mm-hmm. know. And the big round blocks of cheese was at the store and stuff. So um, I'd have to make lunches, and, and they always had pop. I wonder, I don't remember taking um, root beer. It was always the drink. No. Root beer. <laughs> I don't remember taking thing. water to them. Isn't that odd? Well, anyway, when they went with the pot. Maybe so, they had water um, out there, Janet. Oh, maybe. Yeah, yeah, they probably had water. So that was, I learned, so I got driving that when I was 13. Really? Got oh. my light. Well, my grandfather was, you know, Papa Gallagher, yeah. was the supervisor. And um, so I got my license when I was 13. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh. oh, I didn't learn to drive till I was that 15. That big red truck? <laughs> my dad's big red truck. I don't know. I just remember your 1950 Ford because Eleanor used to, whenever she talked about it, 
She always called it the 1954. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was one of the first brand new cars that were ever oh, on the island. The Ford, but, yeah. Uh-huh. Daddy yeah. and his Ford. Yeah. <laughs> but I didn't learn to drive till I was 15, and I just love. I still to this day love to drive. Me too. I used to pester my dad because if he had to go to the store for something, he'd let me drive. Mm -hmm. And I used to pester him all the time. I tried to think up things that we needed at the store so I could <laughs> drive him over there. I do all the driving. Do you? Richie doesn't drive? Well, no? when we get started, no, he gets on that other thing and no, I sit hmm. and drive. I love to drive too. Do you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I don't know why, but I just really think that's a, a big, big deal to be able to get behind the Car for two of a kind. Yeah. <laughs> Living on an <laughs> island. Yeah. yeah. Maybe that's why, because we can go farther than a couple of miles <laughs> from the lake. <laughs> I could only go up as when I first started. I could only go up as far as Bundy's. Mm -hmm. Now that's you know where Bundy's is down there. Okay. There was a turnaround there. Oh. And then we ride over to the point. Mm -hmm. Every time we go over to the point, we could turn around there and come back. That was our <laughs> that was our trip, you know. Yeah. Okay. Um, when the fellas started coming downtown, and um, and I'd have to be home early, nine o'clock, um, and they had older cars, you could hear, you know. So I got on to the sound of them, and <laughs> some of them. That's what they'd do. They'd go up and they'd turn around. That I think they were going out, of, going home. <laughs> I was so, you know, I believed everything. They'd turn around there and then they'd come back and go down the hall hill and, you know, stay out so for a while. So yeah, go to the ball house. diamond yeah, or yeah. whatever was yeah. going on, wherever the group was, you know. They weren't going to go home at nine o'clock. No. <laughs> I finally got on to that. I got a kick out of Richie talking about when we were, you know, we'd come over across on the boat with him and he was talking about them buying beer when they were underage. And oh, yeah. Evidently, that was their main objective in life was to get somebody to buy them mm -hmm. beer. Oh, would they ask? A jumbo. Would they ask people to buy it for them? Or mm -hmm. they yeah, <laughs> it's surprising. Raymond, Raymond Lewis? Yeah, it's surprising the people that. Well, it was 50 them. cents. So they'd all get their money together. They didn't have much money, those guys. And uh, get the jumbo. Well, you know what? What uh, we used to do after we moved to town, we had those big oak trees right there by us. And on the weekends, the, a lot of the Indians were day laborers, and they would work through the week, and then they would get paid. Mm -hmm. And then they'd have a big party under a tree out there, and then they would go home and and. The Atlas girls and Ellen and I would go and pick up the bottles and take them back and get the refund and buy candy. Uh -huh. <laughs> they, um, my dad, they worked for my dad, you know, at the farm and then the fishing thing. Mm -hmm. And Saturday night, they'd get, you know, two or three. I remember him writing checks. He'd write checks. And this one little um, Joe, little Joe the Indian, yeah. they called him. He was kind of crippled, you know, and they'd always send him up to the door. And I'd have to answer the door. Elner would never go to the door mm. for them. I'd go to the door, you know. To get their checks? Uh-huh. Why, why, why were they afraid to come or something? I don't know. Oh. But he'd come up and he'd say, um, Young James, you write him check. Mm. That's what it is. Because you my dad check. was called <laughs> Young James. Yeah. And I, Young James, you write him check. My dad used to loan them money. Um, they would spend all their money and, and then, you know, it wouldn't be payday yet and they needed money to feed their families by, on Fridays. So he would loan them money and um, my mother would always get mad at him for doing it, but they always paid him back. Paid. Always paid. Oh, as soon as they got the check, they came and paid they Frankie didn't. off. Yeah, and then they, they didn't get much, you know, from my dad. No, well, they, I don't think they then, got much at all. Later when um, the fishing, um, then as soon as the, the, about the fish, He'd pay them right that night. Oh, would he? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Got on to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that probably worked out better because then mm -hmm. they wouldn't spend it all on the weekend and not have anything to do. Then if they got the a lot, then they wouldn't come to work the next day. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was yeah. one thing. They're sitting yeah. under the trees. That was one of the uh, bad things that, that uh, white men brought to the Indians was that love of drinking. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the fire water, they called it. They mm -hmm. didn't uh, have that in their heritage. It's just that they they didn't have the willpower to control, I guess. Somehow. They had a certain spot, you know, in the shamrock just for them, for the yeah. Indians. And it really was a, a, a segregated community because you didn't, I mean, everybody was really nice to one another. 
but you didn't actually socialize. You mm -hmm. didn't date an Indian. And um, I can remember my dad explaining to me, he says, don't ever, you know, be tempted to go out with those. some of those young guys. They're really nice looking guys, but he said, you date one of them and none of the white boys will ever date you again. Isn't that um, a funny to think that uh, there's a lot of them around now when you mention it? Yeah, right. and yeah. they were kind uh -huh. of, you know, some of them were pretty. We nice had them in them. school yeah. with us. Sure, Gilbert yeah. High. Yeah, mm -hmm. and they were nice looking. Yeah, that does. That's not like that anymore. Cause no, I, yeah. it's good. <laughs> yeah, it is good. They have their own little place, but um, back in our time, they were here and they were there and different homes. They were all spread around. A lot more. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Well, there was more of them. Mm -hmm. Wabanaki yes, yeah. and Tenawabagisi, Wabanaki, Wazagisi. Mm -hmm. They had they unusual were. names, and I, they all meant something, you mm -hmm. know, in English. Mm -hmm. But I, I know mm -hmm. um, one that lived down um, like where the church is now. Mm -hmm. Well, that used to be a big. Flat thing, yeah. Where Plateau. And, um, kind of, yeah, because yeah. we used to jump off that thing way down. But uh, <laughs> one lived down in there, and that house burnt too, that family. Hmm. Wasagizik. Mm. Yeah. Archie. Archie Wasagizik. Mm. Louise and... I don't remember yeah. them so much. I remember the Lewises and uh, Napons. Uh -huh. He's still up here, isn't he, Ralph and everybody? He wasn't mm -hmm. that too many years ago. Is he still here? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, one last quick question. Um, um, have you noticed, like, since you first lived on the island, has there been any, like, big changes or um, anything that disappeared that you wish was still around today? <laughs> when, um, when I first got married, um, I lived up at the farmhouse up here, and of course, all these trees and everything weren't here. But um, just sitting out on the front porch up there one day, one car went by. Today, I sit out here and watch five cars go by. <laughs> Every time there's much going, I have to stop. Yeah, I stop and wait for all the cars. But back then, you know, in the 50s, one car. Well, the population went down to 250 yeah. around when Colleen was in high school. There were hardly right any kids uh -huh. in school, high school when she went, and now it's up to 650 again. For mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. A lot of retired people, I think, are yeah. here now. A lot of people have come back, well, like uh -huh. you. Yeah. Um, as far as changes that bother me, that I, uh, there's a lot of them. I mean, it's like night and day from what it was. There were mm -hmm. no paved roads. The town was all sand. You know, everybody mm -hmm. has this beautiful lawns. It was just sand hills. We used to uh, go out there and dig in that sand and find old pieces of color, pretty colored glass. And mm -hmm. they were so worn from the sand that they didn't, they weren't sharp. So we were allowed to play with them. Mm -hmm. But I, when I come up here by the Four Corners, and it used to, we lived in that house, the, that little Cross yellow house. And Richie's it. family used to live in that little house mm -hmm. there by the lake. And there was nothing. There was a big field there. And then uh, where the big generator thing is over here, mm -hmm. that was a nice hill. And when we lived there right next to that, we used to go out there and fly kites. And sometimes Ellen and I would just go out there and lay down and roll just down the hill just for something to do. But, I mean, it was just all open and beautiful. Mm -hmm. And now it's... And it's noisy with the generator going, mm -hmm. even at the cemetery. Even it's now, noisy. yeah. yeah. So I, I that that makes me sad, you mm -hmm. know. Yeah, to to see it's how still growing up the yeah. and, uh, the junipers. Yeah, they so really high. This out. was all just sand. This was a field, a hay field, and for the cows, for the well, the yeah. house, you know. Yeah, you could just see the house up there, really clear. Mm -hmm. And from the farm, you could see Hot Lake. In fact, I have a picture that uh, our Barb's husband took years ago, and he must have either gone up in the uh, upstairs bedroom or he climbed the tree to get the picture. But that hill behind the pile, where it's all woods now, mm -hmm. that was all clear land. We used oh. to pick strawberries back there too, and well, my dad had cows, and so they kept that grass down, down mm -hmm. and it, it, and junipers didn't grow. It was just like a meadow back there. Oh. So that's a 
it, well, now the, the boys have done a lot of clearing back there because you mm -hmm. couldn't even walk to the shore because junipers were so bad. Wow. Until just a few years ago, mm -hmm. they started clearing out the junipers and Richie uh, Gillespie cut down a lot of trees on there so you could get down all the kind of scrub trees, you know, right. and got out of there. Yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of nice back there again yeah. now. Yeah. 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 You can see. <laughs> I have a quick one. Just, um, what was your contact with people besides the Indians? Did you have any contact from people from like the mainland or anything during your childhood, or was it just the small community here that you usually interacted with? We used to go down to the boat, you know, when the boat would come in. Well, I was at the beach a lot. I'm um, at the playground because it was just down, you know. And um, back then, when the mail boat would come in at at lunchtime. And um, my dad would be down on the dock, and as soon as we saw that boat coming in, we'd have to run home because he'd always come home for lunch before the boat came in. Mm -hmm. um, my b mother being from Pontiac, occasionally, like maybe every three or four years, we would go down to Pontiac and visit my grandparents, and of course that was like going to a different world. Right. And then sometimes my grandparents would come up here, and my, my grandpa had a car, and they also had a camera, which was something we, the mm. only pictures in existence of us when we were little are when my grandma and grandpa would come and take pictures of us. I think that's where all those pictures came from because my folks never owned a camera. So uh, that was our contact with the out outside world for a lot of years. But only like, you know, uh, maybe every three years. And my dad, once he got to be postmaster for a long time, he didn't have a relief postmaster. So he could not mm -hmm. leave. He didn't leave the island for, I think, 19 years in a row. But mother would go and she'd take a couple of us kids with her when she would. Richie, Richie didn't leave the island until he was like 13. Didn't his, he? His first time off. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. I remember going to Charlevoix and um, the smells was what, you know. Oh. It was so different, the smell walking mm -hmm. up that street, Bridge Street. Yeah. We, we would always You're stay at that top of the exhaust hill. Exhaust from the cars, probably. And and they had um, oranges and everything sitting out outside, oh, you yeah. know, big hmm. boxes of that stuff. I don't know what stuck with you. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> the smell. The smell. That's like going to Mackinac Island. That's what I remember from that because it's horse manure. <laughs> 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 we went there on our honeymoon. Did you? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Mm -hmm. And it was um, the 4th of July weekend, and it had just opened the year before, and everybody was there. Uh -huh. So we thought, well, we'll take the last boat off, you know, because uh -huh. we drove from Charlevoix up there and went over and on that little boat. And so 8.30 was going to be the last boat off, so everybody waited until that 8.30 boat. Oh, wow. Not enough room. So we had to wait for another one. <laughs> <laughs> and I wanted to make reservations, and Rich says, no, we might get some place and, you know, want to stay, or we might, you know, no, we won't make any reservations. Well, we never knew <laughs> about that before, you know, <laughs> making a reservation. So we start driving, and, um, oh, it was raining, and we had a bad time. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Your honeymoon didn't hit. We end too well, huh? No, we had a couple. So where we went going back to? We come back to the island? No, no. Oh. We stayed here until Tuesday, you know, to finish up the bills and everything, and then went to Charlevoix, and I remember we paid for the cake over there. Yeah. And um, Then when so did, where did you go to live right after that? Did you go right to Grand Rapids, Rapids then? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. okay. Then we had the wedding gifts in the car with us and a couple blankets, you know, he had put those in the trunk. Mm -hmm. But uh, we started driving, looking for a place, as everybody else, and dark, and finally we came to a little store, a lot of people there. And he went in and, and they asked, and two men were in there, and they said, well, we could, they were asking for beds, people were, you know. Well, we have an aunt that lives out in the country, and she, she you know, you could come and stay there. So we started out with them, driving behind them in the rain, <laughs> and we went quite a ways. And finally we went over some railroad tracks, and I started crying. Oh, you where know, all your wedding guests were getting Where are they taking <laughs> us? Richie, you got to turn around. So we did, but we're running out of gas. 
we left Charlevoix, not thinking, you know, mm -hmm. went to Mackinac for the day, started driving. <laughs> so we pulled into a, where a restaurant was, there was another couple of cars there. We're still talking. You're booking the app now. <laughs> <laughs> this is Maria. This is my husband, Richie O'Donnell. Nice to meet you. Natasha. Nice to meet you. I know those two. They're pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> they got us together. We're learning things about each other here. <laughs> yeah. So we spent the night there. Wow. In the car <laughs> with our blankets. We, but we the next things. morning, there was... I, I don't know, a lot of cars there at that little restaurant. Oh, okay. But the next morning we went into um, Sault Ste. Marie and got a motel. Oh. <laughs> it all worked out. It's I got the horse in the barn for the night. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think you've answered all our questions and it's good. been amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. Just you learned learned anything. Anything. Oh, oh yeah. we learned so many things. You had excellent uh, stories. So we had fun things. growing up really. Yeah. We did, yeah. Thank you so much. Had a good good experience growing up. This is an amazing yeah. place. We were lucky. It is an amazing place. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It's too bad that there's not well, it would be too crowded if there was a lot more employment here. But then, because mm -hmm. as soon as mm -hmm. we graduated, everybody left.